থেকে আমাদের শেষ অনুষ্ঠান হয়নি বাবা আবার আমাদের বন্ধুরা সেইনা হয়নি অন্তর হয়নিগামা সব পরিবেশন করবে আমাদের <laughs> And uh, we're going to have fun playing this game, are we? Right? Are we going to have fun, guys? Yeah. Right? Well, the audience thinks, thinks that. What do you guys think? Are we going to have fun? You guys look tense. It's, it's easy. Equal, right? It's going to be a equal. Okay? Look at that. So as these people say, you know, what is Fungama? Fungama is fun and Fungama. It's basically a fun, right? Fun and Fungama, it's Fungama. Joe, you know, back in 2011 or 2010. And so this is going to be awesome. Well, I'll be the co-director of Fungama. Uh, my name is Neil Banerjee, along with my beautiful daughter. Joe, Joe. Hey, 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 fire it up. Right? So we are going to be co-hosting this event today. All right. So... Like every quiz, rule, silent guy, like every quiz, rules are really, really important, right? Rules are what sets the strategy. Rules have to be followed, okay? So here are the rules. I know that you can't see the bottom, bottom part of it. But basically, Mota Mota, there are three big rounds. The round number one, you'll basically have questions and we'll start from that team and we'll come to this team by the way there are four teams every team has five participants as you can see and we will start round one from that team we will come over here and there'll be different questions that you'll have these are multiple choice questions there are four choices and there's only one right answer okay it's not a trick question there's only one right answer all right And we're going to do the first round like this, and then it goes back from here all the way back there. That's your round one, the first bullet. The second one is the reins, right? And we're going to give you, we're going to call one of you from every team, and you're going to whisper a word or a phrase of a charade, and you'll have 60 seconds to enact in front of your team. And if you get it right, if your team gets it right, you get points, you get 15 points. By the way, for the first one, you know, there's a little bit of a trick. If you are unable to answer at the time that's given, which is 15 seconds, then it passes on to the next team. Shana will basically manage the time, which is also managing the score. Okay? So it passes to the next team. If you get it right the first time, you get 10 points. If the second team, it passes on, and you get it right, it, you get five points. But it does not pass on to the third team. Okay, you'll get it. It's easy. Once you get it, you'll get it. The final one is basically where you have video clips, right? You'll have video clips, and then there are questions based on everything, right? So that's the rule. That's that's what we will do. It'll become abundantly clear once we get into it. So maybe let's just get on with it. Here are the teams, ladies and gentlemen. ইউনা Uh, Iona, sorry. Iona, what team are you? You're Team Tagore. What do I like? And you are Team Both. Okay? Both, Tagore, Roy, and Vivekananda. I'm sorry. I'm not completely mistaken. Of course. Sorry. Both, Roy, Tagore, and Vivekananda. You guys try to start, start like a little, a little differently, but that's fine. BRTV. Okay, let's just, let's just do it that way. All right. As long as you know your team, it's all good. We get a sample question. 
Let's say there is a question like, when was Pujari established? And let's say it goes to the first team, right? I'm basically going to give you the choices that are going to be these choices. And your time starts now. You have 15 seconds to answer that question. What is your answer? 15 seconds, the timer has started. What's your answer? It's 15 seconds up. All right, 15 seconds is up. It goes to the next team. You have to switch on the microphone. It is on. The microphone is not on. Okay, so it's not working. Can we make sure that all the microphones are working, team? Can we all send the microphone? Sorry, Hello. Working. Working. Is your microphone working? Okay. So that's the only microphone that's not working. Okay. Well, that's good. See, that's why we have samples. Samples so that we can get everything done. 90 is the right answer. So because it asked on to you, this was a sample question, by the way. Yes, sample question, pa. So you're not getting any points. We're just trying to tell you how this game is done. Now, the important thing is that, you know, please don't prompt each other. Because if you prompt each other, it loses the meaning of a competition, right? An audience prompting is not allowed. You'll have enough chances to prompt. Audience prompting is not allowed. Okay? So, with this sample question, you're going to see the quiz. Are we ready? Yes! Show us some love! Okay. All righty. So, the first question goes to team both. And this question is for 10 points. You'll have 15 seconds to answer that question. And your question is... And your question is... Who holds the record of winning the most Oscars? And your choices are oh, no. Daniel Taylor, Snow Country Guy, Snow Country, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, or Walt Disney, and your time starts now. <laughs> Say the name. Okay, it passes on to the next team. Your time starts now. Martin Scorsese. That is not the right answer. Both the teams got it wrong. Audience, anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Walt Disney is absolutely the right answer. 24, 22 Oscars. 22 Oscars that Walt Disney, of all the people Walt Disney won, 22 Oscars. By the way, none of the teams both have zero points in round one. Okay, so the next question is to team number two, right? And team number two, the question that you have is, what is the type of auction Call where the prices keep moving up. IPL. For example, 100, 150, 200, 250. It is not IPL. The choices are Dutch auction, English auction, sealed bid auction, and Vickery auction. Your time starts now. Bangla, Bangla auction. Bangla auction. Say, tell me the name. Dutch auction. Is that the right answer, guys? Unfortunately, no. Goes on to the next team. B. Say the name. Vickery Auction. Vickery Auction is not the right answer, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Does the audience know? The right answer is English Auction. You know, the funny thing is, English auction, the prices keep going up. Dutch auction, the prices keep going down. And Vickery auction is very interesting where the prices are seen bid, but the price is always the second bid, right? Anyway, so that is two questions. Nobody has basically opened an account. Same cricketing terminology. Nobody has opened an account. Let's see if the team number three changes that, okay? 
All right, are you ready, team number three? Okay, there we go. What city is hosted the most Super Bowls? New Orleans, Miami, Los Angeles, or Vegas? Your time starts now. You have, and your time is not New Orleans. New Orleans is not the right answer. Who on the team number four? Miami. And that is not answer. Wonderful. Somebody got an answer, right? Miami is the team that has hosted the most number of Super Bowl. We will have the Super Bowl tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Miami has hosted in Africa. 11 Super Bowls, New Orleans has hosted 10 Super Bowls, and, and Los Angeles has hosted 8 Super Bowls, and tomorrow is in Vegas, which is the second Super Bowl that they're hosting ever. All right? So it's Miami with 11 right answers. Because it was a bonus point, you get 5 points. Finally, you open the account. It's fantastic. We're at the end of round one, and then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have 4 more questions. Um, I'm sorry, it's going to go to question number four. For you guys, right? It's going to go to question number four. And your question is about the geography. AD geography. What is the capital of the country of Brunei? Bandar Seri Begawan, Deira, Belait, or Borneo? Your time starts now. Police. That is not the right answer. It goes on to the next team. Team number one, your time starts now. D. Borneo. That is not the right answer, unfortunately. Anybody? That is the right answer. It is Bandar Seri Begawan. That is the capital of Brunei, which is one of the richest countries because of the oil that they produce, up located in somewhere in Asia, close to Indonesia. But Bandar is not Niki. Bandar is a port. Port, not the Bandar that we know as Bandar, right? Okay. So at the end of round one, Strainer, can you tell us the points? Team Ash has zero points, Team Roy has zero points, Team Tagore has zero points, and Team Vivekananda has five points. All right, ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause. Team Vivekananda is winning with five points, and the rest of the teams are yet to open the account. But we are just getting started. It's going to be fun. The next round, we're going to start with Team Vivekananda, all right? You ready for your next question? Yeah. You guys ready for your next question? All righty. This one is really, really cool. I think you guys are going to like it because it's about the best channel that we all watch, which is Netflix. What show on Netflix holds the all-time highest viewership record? And your choices are Suits, Blacklist, Squid Game, and Ozark, and your time starts now. No prompting, no prompting. Squid Game? Bang it is Squid Game, which is like this most awesome show. I've actually seen it. It has 111 million views. Incredible. Not even like the second one is like 50 million views. So way, way good. Excellent. You actually end up getting 15 points because of this. Great performance, guys. All right, we go to the next team. This is about soccer, all right? You like soccer? Anybody like soccer? Let's do soccer. How many alumni has played Leo Messi won so far? Six, no prompting, no prompting. Eight, 10, 12, you can't stop now. Eight. Say that again. Eight. Louder. Eight. You got it. Here you go. Leo Messi got eight. Alador. And, uh, you know, uh, does anybody know the meaning of Alador? Anybody know the meaning of Alador? It's the golden ball. 
Not the golden boot, but the golden ball. All on board. And how many have Ronaldo won? Anybody? Ronaldo? Five. Ronaldo's got five. Messi's got eight. Brilliant competitor in Spain. I love that guy. All right. We're going to the next team. You do get to your 10 points. Fantastic way to open your round. We go to the next one, which is something about ast astronomy, okay? Astronomy, astrophysics. How about that, right? You guys ready for this? This is a question for 10 points. What is the escape velocity from the moon? Not the Earth, but the moon. This, do you guys know what escape velocity is? Do you know what escape velocity is? Well, escape velocity is the velocity at which, you know, something takes off from a planet without using any kind of, you know, sort of uh, extra, extra stuff, right? I mean, when you, when you throw something up, it escapes from the planet, right? That's, that's what escape velocity is. So, what is the escape velocity from the moon? And your choices are 11.5 kilometers per second, 2.4 kilometers per second, 11.2 kilometers per second, and 5.7 kilometers per, per second. And your time starts now. Eleven point two. Eleven point two is not the right answer. Let's move on to team number one. You have five bonus points. Great way for you to open the account. Hey, is not the right answer, unfortunately. Anybody else? He is the right answer. It's two point four kilometers per second. You know, when you said 11.2, the escape velocity from Earth is 11.2 kilometers per second. So if you were to throw something up at 11.2 kilometers per second, it's never going to come back. It escapes the gravity. It escapes the gravitational force of the Earth. Similarly, if you land on the moon and if you throw something at more than 2.4 kilometers per second, it's going to escape the moon. Right? So that is escape velocity. Ladies and gentlemen, we come on to the last question of this round. Goes to team number one. Both question for you is about a little bit of literature and poetry. And your question is Mark Twain. Mark Twain is the pen name of which author and humorist? William Faulkner. Boys, Sam Langhorn Clements, your time starts now. E. E. Say, tell me the name. Faulkner. Is not the right answer. It comes back to you. Uh, William Spencer Boyce. William Spencer Boyce is actually one of my colleagues who used to work with me at a firm. I just made up a name. It is not the right answer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Twain is the name, is the pen name of Samuel Langhorne Clemens. Samuel Langhorne Clemens. Does anybody know what Mark Twain means? Mark Twain. Samuel Langhorne Clemens was actually, he used, to, he used to be the captain of a riverboat. And Mark and Twain are actually boating terms. Mark means measure and Twain means two. So two furloughs, right? That's a measure of how deep the boat can go. So therefore, Samuel Langhorn Clements is actually also the pen name of Mark Twain. We are coming to the end of this first round. The next round that we are getting into is basically charades. But before we get into charades, let's have a capture of the total number of points that each of the team has. Shana, what's the score? Team Bosch has zero points, Team Roy has zero points, Team Tagore has ten points, and Team Vivekananda has the triple. All right, Team Vivekananda is winning with 15 points. Followed second, Team Tagore and Team Roy. And Team Bosch are still too old to the account, but there are lots of other rounds. Don't lose hope. Don't lose heart. Incredible discussion that we're having over here, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible discussion. I love it. All right. So all the four teams, you've got your score. But guess what? The next round is all about charades. Okay? We all know how to play charades. All of us, right? 
What we're going to do is, we're going to basically have eight phrases or words. We're going to start again from that team, and we need two people from that team. But for this first round, I only need one person. I'm going to whisper something, a phrase in your ear, and I'm going to say, this is your time to start. You will have to act it to your team, not the other teams, but to your team. Whatever I say, you got to act it up. Elephant. Right? Er, whatever you want to do. You gotta act it up. Can't open your mouth. And the rest of the people, the four people in your team, will have to guess the phrase. You have 60 seconds to guess it. You get it right, you get 15 points. This is big. This is the way to come back. The first team is 15, you've got, you've got 10, 0, 0. You want to come back? This is the game to come back. All make sense? All right? Okay, so let's do this. So we're going to start with charades. And let's just see. So who do you, who do you like? Who wants to come and act? Sit out. And the other teams also, please, please determine who wants to do the acting. Make sure the person who's doing the acting really wants to act. Like this person right here. What's your name, sir? Drew, Drew, that's awesome. All right, great. So you got to act it out, and I'm going to give you a phrase, and then I'm going to tell you when to start, and you'll have 60 seconds for them to guess the right answer, okay? Use your microphone to mention the names so everybody can hear. Make sense? Make sure your microphones are on. You ready, Drew? Awesome. Lip sync game. Lip sync game. Excellent. You cannot... You're going to tell them that, okay? All right, good. All right, once you're there, your time starts now. Use the microphone, guys. Use the microphone. Use the microphone. No. One word. Google, 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 Yep, you can't talk. You can't say this. No pressure. And your time is up. The word, the phrase was Captain Underpants. That was, that was, would have been a little hard to do. But anyway, that's fine. That's all right. You guys get the rules. No talking, guys. If you talk, you get disqualified. This is a great way to get 15 points. Make sure your best dramatist comes in and does the acting. Okay? All right. Who's coming in from the next team? No talking. All right? And no problem. Awesome. And your time starts now. Wait, I can not want to First word. Singing. Singing. Circle. Mine. Second word. Sleeping. Sleeping in the first one. Time to sleep. Is it a Unfortunately, your time's up. What is the word? 
brain. You just didn't get it. <laughs> All right, what's up, nigga? Come on, exactly. That's a spell. Here, Yogi Knight. Bro, I live in a mic, and I can sleep, and then I get tired. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It can get frustrating like that sometimes because you're like karaoke night. You're like karaoke, karaoke. Anyway, all right. So who's coming in from this team? Who's coming in from this team? Excellent. All righty. Your time starts. Hiding. Scare. I can see. I. Love. Love. Bingo! That's it! Fine day. Fine day! That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Fine day. Got it? Who got it? The word was, the phrase was fine day. Okay, and it was good. There was a lot of things about fine love, fine deaths and fraud, but fine day. You got it. Got it. That is really, really good. Okay, who wants to go from this team? Who's on now? 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 Who's on Like five seconds. That was part of man. That was part of man. And you know, great job. That is phenomenal. Eight points. This game. Wait, how many points did you have? Zero points. Team Tagore. Get him out. 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 Get him Followed by Tagore with 25 points and Team Roy and Team both. Buckle up because the next round could be just yours. You excited about it? Come on, don't give up. There's more rounds to come. All right? We'll play one more round of Sharad. And give the prize with the Let's just do this. Let's just do this. Just do this. Maybe we start with the same thing that we were doing, right? So who wants to come next? Who wants to go next? Who wants to go next? Okay. Excellent, your time starts now. Circle, so sorry, what was the what was the phrase? Catching fire. Oh. Catching fire. Of course. Catching fire. Right? You guys should catch. You could you run the fire, catch it, and then fire. Catching fire. All right. 
Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. Who wants to do this? Okay, all right. The time starts now. Sky, earthquake. Sky four. Sky four. Thunder. Seems like that. Two. First word. Throwing. Water. Sun. Sky. Ocean. Tsunami.
All right, well, that is unmistakably a Ferrari. is a Ferrari headquarters production facility located in your choices are Rome, Maranello, Milan, and Bologna. Your time starts now. Milan. That is not the right answer. Moves on to Team Roy. Rome, Milan. Tell me the name. It is not Rome. Rome is not the right answer. Milan is not the right answer. What is the right answer? Maranello is the right answer. Yes, Maranello is where Ferraris are made. The headquarters, global headquarters. Are. It is not very far from the north, but it's a small little town in Maranello, which is fantastic. Okay. All right. We'll pass on this question to the next team. Team Roy, come on. Chance to open the account. Guys, come on. Bring it up. All right. Which of the following cars is not? The key, the operative word is not a Ferrari model. The California T, the 488 GT, the 812 Superfast, or the Aventador. Your time starts now. Aventador. You got it. An Aventador is... Aventador is which car? Which, which brand? Aventador is which one? It's a Lamborghini. Thank you. Again, a really, really remarkable Italian party. A Lamborghini Aventador is not a Ferrari, obviously. An Aventador, Lamborghini and Ferrari were like enemies, you know. They're like lashing out at each other. So we're talking about that at some other point in time. Passes on, and finally, great that you were able to open your account. Ten points to you. Comes on to team number three, which is... Which of the following Formula One drivers have not, the key operator word is not, driven for Ferrari, Formula One, okay? Michael Schumacher, Timmy Reichenden, Sebastian Vettel, and Luke Strofel, your time starts now. Louder. Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi Raikkonen is not the right answer. Pass it on for bonus points. Pass us now. Luke Strossel. Bang on. Luke Strossel is the right answer. Luke Strossel is actually my colleague at work. <laughs> so I generally have this tendency of putting my, 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 my colleague's names. But Schumacher, Raikkonen, and Bebel are all... Glory, I mean, really, really story. Formula One Ferrari drivers. Of course, Schumacher is the biggest, if you if you ever heard of him. But anyway, we come to the, the last question on Ferraris. To Team Vivekananda, you seem to have uh, gotten five points. Right. Okay. All right. The Italian bird Scuderia is often associated with Ferrari. What does it mean? Stable? Track, yeah. hypersonic, yeah. elegant. Your time starts now. Elegant. Trap. Trap. That is not the right answer. Passes on to you. Great chance for you to open the account. Time starts now. Is not hypersonic, unfortunately. Hypersonic would be the super veloce. In Italian, it's called super veloce. Trap. In Italian, it's pista. If they say pista, it means truck. Stable is the right answer for Scuderia. 
Scuderia means stable. Okay? It's a horse is stable, Ferrari is stable, Scuderia. There you go. All right, so so much for Ferrari. Jaina, what is the two rules so far? Team Bulgaria. 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 Team Increase the lead 50, 40, 10. Still don't want to count, but maybe this round is where you're going to do it. All right? You're ready for the next clip? And the next clip is phenomenal. Let's look at this one. One of my most favorite songs of all time. Here comes the time when we so <laughs> So we are the all right, everybody heard that? Yeah. We are the world. Back in the day, growing up, you guys heard the song? You guys heard the song? Michael Jackson, a whole host of other people. All right, so we will have some questions on that one. Maybe we're going to change the rounds a little bit, Chana. Maybe we start with the and go to that. All right? Can we do that? Okay. Team Vivekananda, the first question for you. The clip is from all we are the world. Who is not the singer of this song? Peter Turner, Diana Ross, Bob Dylan, Peter Cetera, your time starts now. Peter Cetera. Well, do you know who Peter Cetera is? Your coworker? He's not a colleague of mine. Anybody in the audience who knows who Peter Cetera is? Your colleague. Your colleague. Not my colleague. Has anybody heard of a band called Chicago? Yeah. Peter Cetera is the lead singer of Chicago. So he's a real singer. But yes, you're right. That is the right answer. Peter Cetera is the right answer. 10 points for Team Vikramanda. They continue to pay their ladies. Coming on to the next scene here, we will go to the scene here. Okay, so what was the key purpose for putting a song like this together? To end war, to bring global peace, USA for Africa, reduce carbon emissions, your time starts now and no plastic means. No, but it's a good try. Unfortunately, passes off the bonus for she takes in touch of USA for Africa. This is exactly what the song was produced. USA is singing for Africa and African children and famine and poverty and food and all of that stuff, right? That was essentially Okay, all right. So the question for you guys, you guys got five bonus points there. Who wrote the song? All right. People write the song, right? Walt Disney and Egg Crouch, Patty Belafonte and Bruce Springsteen, Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie, Quincy Johnson, Michael Obarkin, your five stars now. Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson. Bingo! Smile That is exactly right. Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie wrote the song together. Thank you for teaching it to us. Brilliant. Good stuff. Good stuff, guys. All right. Let's end in the week. Finally, coming back to Tito's. All right. Great chance for you guys to open the account. And your question is, how long did it take to record the song? How long? Okay. And your choices are one night, one day, one week, one month. Your time starts now. One night. No problem. 
They had like, they had 50 singers and a whole lot of bands, and then one night they recorded this. All right, so we're gonna continue the theme. We're gonna start with the game speed, then we're gonna go over there. It looks like that is actually lucky for you guys because this is where you guys opened the account. Fantastic! But at the end of this round, Shana, tell us what's the score. Team Bosch has 10 points. Team Roy has 25 points, Tagore has 40 points, and Team Dita Kananda has 60 points. But really happy that Team Bose and Team Roy are slowly picking back up. You've got two more rounds to pick back up. And let's see, what is the one thing that everybody is talking about? It's Jenny Art. What is generative artificial intelligence or generative art? Generative artificial intelligence technology that can create new content in text, image, music, and video forms. Businesses are exceptionally excited by the possibilities of specialized generative AI models because they can be trained on organizations' own corporate data and they can collaborate with knowledge networks to dramatically boost productivity. Estimates value the productivity boost at up to $80 billion a year to the global economy. An example of generative AI is chatbots, which have taken the world by storm, thanks to their ability to write human-like conversational text. They can express complex ideas synthesized from the vast volumes of information on which they are trained. In business, they can help write or improve emails and presentations, help ideate and new marketing efforts, and much more. Generative AI, generative AI, we've all heard about it. Many of us use it, right? It's important. It's the new thing. Hopefully it's not a fad. I don't think it is. The question that goes for Team Vivekananda, what does GPD stand for in the chat box? Chat GPD. General physical training, general pre-trained transformer, general classical transitions, general psychosomatic terms. Your time starts now. Yes. Ten more seconds. General pre-trained transformer. That is exactly the right answer. Generative pre-trained transformer is the right answer. Everything else is just made up. Completely made up. Okay, the next question for the next team. All right, guys, come on. This is your chance to, to sort of catch up with Team Vivekananda. You guys are pretty close. So what team think is a, is a portmanteau of which of the following words? Do you know what a portmanteau is? It's a hybrid. You join two words to make one word, right? It's a portmanteau of which of the following words? Deep trouble, fake. Deep learning and fake. Deep, deep training and fake. Deep and fake. Your time starts now. And your time is up. Sorry, guys. You only have 15 seconds. You should have just answered. 25% probability of getting it right. Come on. It passes on to bonus question for the second team. Your time starts now. Deep learning fake? Bingo! That is exactly right. Deep learning and fake is the right work on of deep fake. Okay. All right. So then we're going to go to you guys back again to see how long does it take ChatGPT to reach 100 million users? How long? Okay. A month? Two months? Four months? Six months? The time starts now. That is not the right answer. Pass it on to the first team. Time starts now. Four months is not the right answer. The right answer is two months. Two months is what it took for them to reach 100 million users. What took Google Translate 79 months to get to? What took TikTok nine months to get to? ChatGPT did that in two months. And maybe they'll get to the 200 million mark in less than three months, right? Or four months. Um, all right. 
Let's keep going. This question is for Team Bose. Final question on ChatGPT. And your question is, which industry application area has not been significantly impacted by generative AI thus far? Okay, industry application area not significantly impacted. Okay, choices are healthcare, finance, agriculture, entertainment. Your time starts coming. Agriculture. Thank you. That is sort of a little obvious, right? I mean, you would expect, right? Agriculture. But that is the correct answer. Big round of applause. That is the third clip. We're getting into the final clip and the final round of this competition. But let's get to the scores. Shana, what are the scores? Team Boss has 20 points. Team Roy has 30 points. Team Tagore has 40 points. And Team Vivek Ananda has 70. Yeah, 20. 40, 70. All multiples. That's good. 20, 30, 40, 70. That's good. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to the last, last, last clip. This is your last chance to make sure you get full points and hopefully get some bonus points out of it. Let's see where we go. Very, very close competition here. Um, but let's go to the last clip, which is about a university that we all know about or we've heard about, right? What university? Today, we're featuring my childhood dream, Harvard University. You know this guy? He's everybody. This is Mano Penny into, into Harvard. Now you're officially on Harvard. You're not going to so right now we are walking in the Harvard yard, and it's very beautiful. Everything is all brick, red bricks everywhere. And the thing about Harvard is that it's the oldest higher education institution in the United States. And that's why a lot of these are built from bricks. As we walk around, there's no classes in this area. So it's like where a lot of the tours are coming. And, uh, all righty. Okay, so we'll go again with team Bose. First question for you guys. Harvard University's endowment is one of the largest in the world. Approximately how much is it? You know what endowment is, right? Corporation give money. What is the money? How much money does Harvard have? Okay, that's endowment. Grants. Okay. All right. 10 billion, 25 billion, 60 billion, 90 billion dollars. Your time starts now. Twenty-five is not the right answer. Goes on to team number two. Team Roy. Sixty billion is the right answer. You get five bonus points based on that question. Sixty billion dollars is the right answer. It's a lot. You know, when I went to Emory, Emory's endowment was like five billion dollars. Today, Emory's endowment is like eight billion dollars. Compare that to $60 billion. It's a lot of money that they get in terms of pregnancy. All right, now the question for 10 points to your team is, what is a Baker Scholar at the Harvard Business School? What does a Baker Scholar really need? The big one? Top 1% of the class? Top 5% of the class? Grade A? Top three students with the best placement. Your time starts now. Uh, a, top one percent of the class. It's not the right answer. Pass it on to the next team for five points. All right, starts now. B, top five percent of the class. Bingo. Five points, bonus points, top five percent of the class in Harvard Business School. It's called a Baker Scholar. And it has nothing to do with the word make or actually taking something. I did hear that. That was a good one. All right. So we've got the next question, which comes out to team number three. Which of the following residents graduated from Harvard University? Okay. Presidents. Presidents of the United States. Abraham Lincoln, JFK, Tom Jefferson, and Ronald Reagan. Your time starts. No problem, take please. What is the Donald Trump? B J F K is the right answer. Bingo, 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 bingo. That is exactly right. You know how many presidents, U.S. presidents, actually went to Harvard? 
Harvard University. Anybody? A. Eight presidents. Right? Obama, of course. Right? George Bush Jr. Donald Trump. So, anyway, the eight presidents that went JFK was one of them in the story list. And the final question for Team Vivekananda is. Harvard University is named after a guy called John Harvard. Who is he? What was his profession? Bitter, bitter. Right? Bitter. Railroad engineer, teacher, home builder, or clergyman, your time starts now. Who's that? 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 What you have no idea what it's about. You guys are good at these uh, tests for multiple choice. Clergyman, anybody know what a clergyman is? It's a, it's a pre. It's like, you know, you've got a. Yeah. In, 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 in a church, you've got a minister. This is a minister. And he was a clergyman. His dad was a clergyman. And they got a lot of money from England and they invested that into Harvard University. With the first endowment that was done by John Harvard. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end I of the gamma. But we will have to understand the scores of each team. Dana, what are the scores? Team Bosch has 20 points. Team Roy has 35 points. Team Tagore has 55 points. And Team Vita Kananda has 80 points. Oh. Ah, Team Vivekananda is our winner here with 80 points, followed by the runners-up Team Tagore with 55 points. But well played, Team Bowles and Team Roy with 20 and 35 points. Bale, bale. This was amazing. Thank you for your participation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation. This is excellent. Thank you, Shana. Appreciate it. That is the end of Sayama with decided winners. Please stay on stage while we have somebody from. I can find. Oh, I have a fire. I have a fire. Do you have you here? Yeah, that's it. Fire. Please come on stage. Thank you so much. Come in here. Come on, sir. I'm going to open the next one. I want to make a new session.